Why? Why would you do that? Why would you do any of that? There has been a lot of concern about administrative capacity being taken away. This now means that you have no way to completely ignore Empire Sprawl in Stellaris. Instead, you may be able to mitigate it to some extent, but you will still be getting penalties as you grow larger and wider. I've read a lot of comments and a lot of people are scared about these new changes. They don't like them. They think Paradox are punishing them and they think they've gone a little bit too far. I'd like to offer a different opinion. I think Paradox haven't gone quite far enough. I've seen the new beta. I've seen the new numbers for Empire Sprawl. And I think that Empire Sprawl needs to be a much bigger penalty than they're currently testing it out as. But how did I reach that conclusion? Well, in order to answer that question, I think the first thing we're going to need to do is talk about what Empire Sprawl is and what it represents. In the current version of the game, that is 3.2, Empire Sprawl is a measure of your territorial expanse, that is all of your controlled systems, colonies and districts, they contribute to it, as well as the size of your population. This means that having a larger empire, and thus higher empire sprawl, puts a strain on your empire's administrative capacity and will increase the cost of technologies, traditions, leaders, edicts, and campaigns. To offset empire sprawl, we have administrative capacity. Bureaucrats are a special job that generates administrative capacity, and if you can increase your administrative capacity, it will reduce the effect of empire sprawl, as currently empire sprawl will only affect you if it is higher than your administrative capacity, and you will suffer overextension, which is the difference between that your empire sprawl and the administrative capacity. This means that we can use jobs like bureaucrats in order to reduce any tech and tradition penalties we are getting from being wide. How is it changing? Well, in the new system, as you may already know, we have lost administrative capacity. So as you can see here, there is nothing to offset our empire sprawl. They've actually and this is a little interesting, they've actually not really gotten rid of administrative capacity. I think what they've done is they fixed it to 50 and they've made it so it cannot be changed and modified. That does suggest that if they continue with an implementation like this, you may be able to, through the use of mods, get administrative capacity back in the game. But now, any Empire Sprawl over the value of 50 will contribute to what used to be called overextension and is now just called Empire Sprawl. At present, for every one point of Empire Sprawl, we get plus 0.1% technology cost and plus 0.2% tradition cost, as well as plus 1% edict upkeep. These numbers are all, of course, test numbers as they are in the beta, and so they could be subject to quite a bit of change. But is this really an issue? At the moment on my screen, you're seeing here an empire with 447 empire sprawl. Now we're about 70 years into the game. I've managed to get about 2000 tech points. That's quite a large amount of tech. Am I really going to be bothered by a 30% increase to my technology costs? Yes, the tradition adoption cost of 60% is quite a lot more upsetting. And if you're enjoying this video, please expand that like button. I'm not going to look at traditions and unity because there are some weird things going on there. I'm not quite sure how they're going to finally balance it. For instance, at the moment, if you run all of the edicts, which are now very, very expensive because of how Empire Sprawl is implemented. Uh, for instance, this one here starts at a base of 50 unity and can increase by 487% due to my 487 Empire Sprawl. If you run all of the edicts, you will get probably negative unity, and if you then hit zero, you will end up losing 20 stability and 100% governing ethics attraction on all your worlds. However, that might be worth it if you are able to benefit from all of the edicts. 
but let's focus on what happens to our technology cost as we increase the size of our empire and thus our empire sprawl. If we look at the breakdown for the empire sprawl of this empire, a large amount of the empire sprawl, about three quarters of it, is coming from my population. That is because pops will roughly add about plus one, slightly less than plus one empire sprawl per pop. You'll get 10 Empire Sprawl from every colony, about one Empire Sprawl from every system, and then also half an Empire Sprawl from each of your districts. And that means that even if you are a tall Empire, you only have a few planets, those planets are still going to get pops on them. You're still going to need lots of population. You probably won't have the same high levels of pops as a very, very wide Empire with say five times the number of planets but you will still suffer from empire sprawl like everyone else. And that means we should really think of empire sprawl not as a penalty, but as a natural consequence of growing larger, getting wider, and getting more pops. Because having more pops means we have a larger economy and we can do more with those pops. If we look at empire sprawl in isolation, and we don't think about what happens to our empire as our empire grows, yes, it seems very stifling to have lots and lots of empire sprawl. But it's important to remember, as your empire sprawl increases, the population of your empire goes up, and therefore you will be able to output more technology and more unity, and that means that the effective rate of technological research probably will continue increasing. Let's do a quick thought experiment. At the start of the game, you have about 50 empire sprawl. A large amount of that is coming from your pops, about three quarters, slightly under. And for that, we have two researchers, and these researchers are outputting a base of four research points in each category per researcher. Now let's assume as our empire grows in size, we only add one research lab, and that is two extra researchers for every 50 sprawl. That means if we were to add an extra planet and we added 30 extra pops on those planets, each of those planets would only have two pops working research jobs. This is not very many researchers. This is actually, this is a very, very low number of researchers. Many empires, the first few buildings you'll build will be research labs. And I suspect you'll probably end up with somewhere in the region of six to eight pops working research jobs per 50 empire sprawl. So remember that all of these numbers are a conservative underestimate. So just looking at the research output of these two pops per 50 empire sprawl, what happens to the rate we can research as we increase the size of our empire and thus increase the number of researchers we have whilst yes growing larger and yes getting more penalty well here is a graph of what's going to happen now on the y-axis we have research rate and that is research per month now this is basically the effective research output of your researchers once Empire Sprawl has been taken into account. At the start of the game, when you have no impact from Empire Sprawl and only two researchers, you are going to be getting eight research points. As you increase the size of your empire, as long as you only gain an additional two researchers for every 50 new Sprawl, every additional researcher adds less and less to your effective research. And so what this means, all the way up at 10,000 Empire Sprawl, which to be quite frank is a ludicrous number, you're probably never going to reach in your games unless you're playing on a huge map and you take all of it and build so many habitats I can't believe. But out at that extreme end, for 200 researchers, because that's how many researchers you would need to keep proportionate, as I've talked about, up to this 10,000 Sprawl, you're only getting the effective research output of about 36 and a half researchers. So that means that a very, very wide empire, which has these 200 researcher pops, would be producing the same amount of research every month as a very small empire with no sprawl if they could fit 36 and a half pops in the research job without having a broken economy. What this graph basically shows us is that when you get wider, if you increase the size of your empire, it is imperative you keep the proportion of people in your empire working towards research the same. 
as long as you do that, you will always be getting a benefit for increasing the size of your empire. Your effective research rate will still be increasing. And as our empires get wider and wider, we will never see our research rates slowing. That will not happen. What we will be seeing, however, is we will see diminishing returns on adding additional researchers. And this basically means that a large empire, a massive empire with 10,000 empire sprawl, should be able to keep up with an, a phenomenally large empire with 100,000 empire sprawl because the effective research rates of those empires should be relatively similar. The bigger empire is definitely going to be leaps and bounds ahead economically. They're going to be producing many more resources and many, many more alloys. And that means they'll probably have a much larger fleet. But the smaller empire is going to find it quite easy to keep up technologically. And the lower your empire sprawl is, the fewer additional researchers you will need to increase your research rate. And this basically means at the moment, with the current numbers we have, as to get a thousand empire sprawl means you'll only have plus 100% tech cost, you can probably pretty much ignore empire sprawl because you're going to be adding a lot more than two researchers per 50 sprawl to your empire. That means that the entire game is going to be played on the left-hand side of that graph we saw. And that is a position where we don't really see any differentiation between wide and tall empires. Any empire under about 2,000 sprawl could be considered tall from the point of view of the penalty we currently have. But what do you think about the changes to Empire Sprawl? Do you think this is a good thing or do you think that they are simply ruining the game? Please let me know in the comments below. Now what happens if we change the effectiveness of Empire Sprawl? Now we're going to look at if we keep static research rate, that is we only have two researchers, we never build any more. And instead, we make Empire Sprawl twice as effective, four times as effective, possibly even eight times as effective. What does that do to our research rate? As you can see from this graph, basically, it just goes up linearly. This means that we're going to have slower research rates if we double the effectiveness from Empire Sprawl. If we increase it by 20 times, it's just going to be 20 times slower. It's completely linear. However, when we take a look at what happens to our research rate if science income stays proportionate to Empire Sprawl, we see a much more interesting picture. If the point of Empire Sprawl is to provide a nerf to wide empires such that smaller empires can keep up with them from a technological perspective, and I suspect that is meant to be the point of Empire Sprawl, then we want an Empire Sprawl penalty that causes a plateau to happen in the playable range of the game. And I would say the playable range for Empire Sprawl is from around uh, three to 500, that would be quite a small empire, with quite a large empire being 1,000, 2,000, possibly 3,000 at the upper limits. So we really would prefer to get an Empire Sprawl penalty that causes something like that to happen. Now, if you see between the two to four times Empire Sprawl penalty, that does start to plateau in the appropriate range. Though, of course, you are still getting a benefit for becoming wider, you are still increasing your research rate. What all of this really means is that there is, in fact, some minimum research time as there is a maximum number of researchers any empire could realistically support at a given empire sprawl. And as you push Empire Sprawl up and up, as long as you're at that maximum proportion, you will have achieved the minimum possible research time and you simply won't be able to go above that in the game. Is that a problem? Does that limit players? No. Basically, it means you can't have an infinite research rate. Fine. 
but no one could physically get an infinite research rate anyway. It simply means that as you increase your empire size, you will get diminishing returns from simply building new researchers. There comes a point where you will simply have to build new researchers in order to keep up with the empire sprawl in your empire. But what about traits like unruly? I've heard a lot of people say things like unruly is dead, it's a bad trait, we really shouldn't take it because now we can't mitigate our empire sprawl. Well, I've got a graph here and it may not look like it, but there are three separate lines on this graph. In yellow, we have the research time, that is the months taken to generate 1000 research points for an empire with both unruly and intelligent. Now this does assume that as your empire sprawl increases, you are keeping to that rule of two researchers per 50 empire sprawl. And then in red and right next to that in blue, we have the base and an empire with just unruly. From a research point of view, if you're taking unruly in order to take the intelligent trait, it is always beneficial. You will always have more research at this specific science income proportional to your empire sprawl. And if you don't increase your empire sprawl, but instead put more of your pops into working research jobs, into generating more science, then unruly is completely out of that equation. Anyway, you're just going to get benefit with no downside. Even if you keep unruly, but don't take intelligent, you use unruly to take some other trait, it is a basically negligible difference. Now, I have assumed here that 70% of your Empire Sprawl will be coming from Pops, and therefore that Empire Sprawl will get 10% larger. Now, what is the effective difference? Well, at the beginning, taking Unruly is basically a 0.3% difference. And as your Empire Sprawl goes up, assuming you keep your research income proportionate, you're going to see the effective difference keep increasing but it's never going to exceed 10% of the proportion of your pops with Unruly. Which means at worst, in a game with say 10 million Empire Sprawl, you're probably going to end up with a 7% decrease to your research speed. But I'm sure by that point, you can either mod Unruly out or you can take Intelligent to completely offset it. The important takeaway is that it is always better at these numbers to take Intelligent with Unruly as opposed to taking none of them at all. Generally, if you start thinking of Empire Sprawl as less of a penalty, but a natural consequence of expanding your empire, expanding the economic and industrial capacity of your empire, then it doesn't seem so much of a bad thing. It also means we could end up with situations, if they tune the Empire Sprawl just right, we could and should end up with a situation where small, tall empires are able to keep up with their much larger, much more economically powerful neighbours, and that should provide very interesting gameplay in the mid to late game. That is what I'm interested in here. I'm interested in a fun, fantastic Stellaris experience for everybody. Please, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to see another video from this channel, by clicking the video on screen now, you'll be choosing a video selected just for you.